You are listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting, the best in paranormal talk, only on Paranormal Experience Radio, broadcasting live out of Birmingham, Alabama. Live now. Hello. Hello. And we are back. And I am so excited to have you here. I was just telling you during the break that I'm thrilled about that. Been way too long. We were talking about attachments, and yes. I, I'm not afraid of attachments. Um, they don't last long. I always use a little Florida water brush everything off of us. And if I have an attachment, that means it's a spirit that really wants to connect. I'll sit down. I'll write with it. I'll work with it. But I can, I can let it in partially and not all the way in. So I guess 20 something years ago, there was a couple of times that it might have been more off guard, and. Um, Oh, one time, but she was a really sweet spirit, and we've been friends ever since, strangely enough. Very famous spirit in our town known as Julie, who died freezing up on the roof. Um, it's kind of our Romeo and Juliet story, and it's just interesting that the main apartment of the building of which she shows herself so much, she's made sure that I've befriended everyone that's lived there since that first attachment. Um, you know, she had me skipping down the street like a little girl. I felt like the world was my oyster and I was so happy and I kept trying to hit signs and giggle and I was like, okay, That's this cool. isn't me. I'm not alone. This is kind of cool. You know, and I'm, I'm going, I'm half there and half not there, you know, and I was going, I had to go pick up my kid from school. So I had that in my mind, you know? So I went back to the voodoo museum where I was stationed at the time. I used to have kind of my, those photo gallery and seances and haunted slave quarters behind that instead of my current location at 828 North Rampart. So I went back there. Another priestess, Priestess Coco, was there, and I knocked on the door, and she's like, what do you want? I'm very busy. I said, well, I got this ghost with me. And um, and she's like, you want me to get rid of it? I was like, I don't know. That sounded so final. Like, no I don't doubt. Get yeah. You know, you know, and uh, she's like, well, hurry up. I'm in a hurry. I got, I got people, things to do. And I'm like, oh. Well, I got to go get my kid from school and I got to drive. So I better not be having the ghost. And, you know, I said, it was such a wonderful feeling that she just kind of put Florida water in, on her hand and a cup and just bam, bam in the to heart chakra and said, Julie, be gone. I did not tell her where I come from or the name of the ghost. That one has become a stay to close friend of mine and visit her and love the, the priestess as well as the ghost. So not all attachments are bad things. I mean, I can still hold my own. So I don't have to completely lose myself. Oh, occasionally I have. And that's what you do in trans dance possession inside of ritual. You're asking the loa or the spirit or the mystery to come in and dance with you. And during that time, they feel the flesh, they dance, they eat, they drink. But you get a spiritual knowledge and a lift from that direct communication. And then you give healings and readings and then they leave. Um, so that is something that is part of voodoo and several styles of, you know, religions that have that belief system. And it, it, it's hard for most humans to let go, to have that feeling of security and trust that you're willing to go under and, and not make a damn fool of yourself, let's say, or do something dangerous. It's, it's hard for people to just let go to get to that in-between place where you communicate with spirits uh we have to trust and we have to let our ego step aside you know ego has no place in the communication uh prejudice has no place and that's difficult for the average being you've got to get rid of the beta brain waves that we are trained to use every single minute of the day we compartmentalize we we judge we and i don't even mean in a bad way we just that's how you learn. And it's a totally different side of the brain, too. So you've got to keep in that in-between state or alpha or lower so that you can communicate. They say there's only 10 seconds when the doubt and the confusion comes in and the worry about paying the phone bill for you to switch back over to beta gear. You know, you've got to step back to see all the many worlds that we live in and so, try. So is that, would transcendental meditation be the same thing? No. Well, yes, but no. Uh, you're sitting still. You're trying to vibrate out of body to get to a higher plane. So sort of, I guess, if you can, 
it, it's a it's a different method of getting there, obviously. But you can meditate and see and communicate. If you can see and communicate when you're in that state of meditation, then it would be yes. But this is dancing out of the body rhythm, so the spirit rhythm takes over. So other spirits can come through, letting that space be shared and or taken over by this by a particular spirit or loa. So the transcendental meditation, I believe, just helps you get more between the worlds to that in-between state that is important for communication, relaxation, healing. But it's not necessarily the same as having a spirit come to and through you. That's interesting because I have just, because I've heard all my life of trance mediums. Right. And that, that's trance medium and transcendental meditation aren't the same thing. Though. Okay. That's where I was not clear because I know that when I was young and was taught transcendental meditation, I was able to do like out of body things. Right. Which is sure. not what I think you should be doing if you're trying to connect with spirit. But it sounds kind of like Oh yeah, no, you no, are. your body's yeah, you kinda gotta get out of the way. <laughs> yeah. Uh but you can still stay there. I mean there's still a connection. Out of body experiences are, are a lot different. That's what I'm consciously taking my soul and I my spirit and I'm walking over to meet you at your investigation to help or to assist and by the way, just to throw a whole wrench in the ointment. Um, by the way, when when I do that and when I have done that, I may look like a ghost to you. Would you look like you as a ghost? Not necessarily. I might be an orb. I might be a shadow. I've never bothered to get dressed or pay attention to what I am when I go on to the other side. But I have gone to certain rituals, to certain healing things that I couldn't go to in the flesh. I have gone to other ghost investigations and told people what the room looked like, what was going on, who was there with them. I have done that uh, remotely from sitting right in my altar room in my bedroom in New Orleans, but I'd be in a lot of other places. And you might misconstrue me as a ghost because phantoms of the living do exist. A lot of times the phantoms of the living are not necessarily doing it intentionally. On Dreamscape, you might end up in, let's say, the house you grew up in. Right. God knows I've had a lot of dreams about the house I grew up in when I've tried to go through different stages of my life, you know. Is that being visualized by the people that live there now? I think it's possible. And you can, can I knock something off of a shelf? Maybe. I, you know. Have you ever tried I, to? I work, um, I, I've done a few things. I have screamed. And it was heard Wow, Mile, miles away inside the place is a different sound. Oh, I have experimented. Yes. Well, you are, you uh, are prone to do that. Scream? You're so inclined. No. <laughs> In, <laughs> experiment. You you're, so, you're so inquisitive. It's one of the best things about you because, you know, you're always testing, always checking. I like that. Well, I just, I just do different things. I don't, necessarily try to look up on how other people are doing things i just do what feels right or maybe right. i'm being spirit led you know if i'm dealing with children's spirits i play hide and seek i mean i read them stories i do things so you know i do simple logical things that i would do with them as a person you know, and there's this, all kind of things i'm sorry sorry i was going no, to you say that this is such a natural thing for you at this point. Has it always been or yes. did you? Yes. Always so you, just did what I felt or what they said, you know, what I heard or what I felt not, you know, I've been kind of accidentally on purpose teaching this for 25 years full time, always done it my whole life for fun. Right. Uh, but just automatically started that way without, I don't like, that it's a scientific experiment. It's a social it is social. connection. You know, I, I don't think that, you know, people or spirits should be put under glass per se <laughs> or told or bossed around. You can plead, you know, you can 
come election time, I've, I've done my share of pleading in <laughs> cemeteries. Listen, guys, can you fix this? You know, um, Get on up here. If, if you care, would you please, you know, <laughs> I don't do it often enough, obviously, but I have done it. And I've asked for the most that I, the most time that I've actually solicited spirit help in my life has been for Katrina. Yes. That was really oh my the only time that I went and said, okay, now is the time. Okay, I'll yeah, get here, do this, fix this, come back home, whatever the case may be. In general, I don't do a lot of soliciting. Right. You know, protect us, watch over us, hurricanes coming, help us. You know, little, in brief, I did it much more often for the few years after Katrina. It was, it was a, hard, a hard deal. But yeah, the spirits are there always, and I think they are affected by what goes on with their loved ones in the places that they once lived and the family they've left behind. So they have a vested interest in these places and they help build them. So I, I believe they still care. Absolutely. They still care. And I must say, do we have a break any minute or do I have time? Uh, to you've, got, you've got two and a half minutes. Oh, let's see if I can do it in two and a half minutes. Uh, I must say right now that I'm in a physical situation as well as a spiritual situation for the last few years uh, that helping spirits on the other side of the veil, especially women, and I'm always helping children, but women, you must know that the Me Too movement is affecting both sides. There are many murdered victims, rape victims, women on the other side who are still held captive by their abductors, mentally, spiritually, that the Me Too movement is actually releasing some of them. Now, this is angering a lot of the abductors. captors. And, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. You know, so this is going on here and there. As there are more and more people that are being released from the bondage, women and spirits, the more, you know, this balance, this thing we were talking about earlier is trying to occur on both sides of the veil. And there have been a lot of women spirits that are healing. And it, it, it is a process that's very beautiful. I mean, it's very hard, but it, it, it's, it is beautiful and it is worth it. And a lot of them are growing. That, that, is, that is beautiful. I mean, that's not something that you would anticipate, but a, a lot of the people who experience those things... You, know, you carry can, their trauma. Yes. They carry their trauma. If they're not ready to release it, I mean, we all carry our trauma. Yes. The wounded inner child. Why do you think something that, I mean, some of them don't, some of them have gone beyond it because they were spiritually in a really great place at when that happened, that they wouldn't let their soul be abducted with their body. But there right. are others that were not in a good place that might have been, I don't know, who knows, let's say on drugs or, or something when they were raped or murdered or killed, whatever the case may be, not to judge. Just, just there are so many people that are being released, even after years and years of being stuck on the other side. And there's some other spirits on the other side that are rallying those spirits together. So there's a little bit of a feud going on about this change and reclaiming the matriarch, as I call it, on the right. other side as well. So it's, it's a good thing, though. It is a good thing, but as we were saying before, you know, why is the spot being stirred? We hope that it brings it to a new point. It, it will. It's just a slow.